at the Mount, just outside Shrewsbury. Your sporting companions? Very soon there'll be nothing left alive in the county of Shropshire. Hardly, Father. You wanted to see me? Indeed I did. I, uh, take it rat catching is not to be your chosen profession. Of course not. Well, I wish you displayed the same enthusiasm for medicine. I'm sorry, Father. It's just that I shall never be as good a doctor as you. The way to attract patients is by winning their confidence. You have never lacked for confidence, Charles. Merely application. I wish I was more certain. It is not too late to offer me a better suggestion as to how you propose to earn your living. I don't have one. Well, astonishing as it may sound, the University of Edinburgh Medical School is prepared to accept you. When would I start? A place has been reserved for you for the Michaelmas term. Well, at least it will give the wildlife in these parts a chance to replenish their numbers. Now, it is true to say, gentlemen, that the abdomen is something of a challenge to surgical techniques. Nevertheless, the removal of stones from the bladder and the excision of surface tumours have manifestly increased confidence in modern methods. Now, I think we can say with sureness that as a result of uh, skill and speed in techniques developed over the last quarter century, chances of survival, especially in cases of less drastic surgery, have practically doubled. What is your name, Colonel? Mary Hamilton, sir. Mary, oh, that's a good name. Well, we were lucky to catch you just in time, weren't we, Mary? I wish I was away home. You will be, girl. You will be. Now, gentlemen, look carefully at the swelling. Would someone be good enough to tell me how I arrived at my diagnosis of myelitis? Mr. Falconer? Inflammation of the side, sir. Quite so. Gross inflammation. Formation of pus. Anything else? Probably accompanied by high fever, sir. Good. This wee girl has a considerably elevated temperature. Now, where would any of you anticipate that I should make my first incision? Mr. Darwin. Mr. Darwin. At the site which is reddest or most tender. Another sip of wine for the wee girl. And now, open your mouth, there's a good girl. That's it. would have persuaded me to return. It was long before the blessed days of chloroform and the sight of that poor child haunted me for many a year. Every medical student seeing a piece of surgery for the first time feels nausea. It can be overcome if you try. But, Papa, some people can't bear to watch surgical operations. I faint if somebody cuts a finger. You're a woman. There are no women surgeons. In any case, Father, I could never be the success you are. Oh, nonsense. I've seen you with some of my patients. You make a splendid physician. I'm afraid it just isn't to my taste. Not to your taste? What then is to your taste? Apart from shooting every living creature out of the sky and cluttering your room with all manner of dead insects and other objects. Don't be too hard on him, Papa. No, Papa, please don't. You told me once you detested medicine when you were young. There seems to be a conspiracy this morning to ensure that I should not be too hard on my younger son. Well, you wouldn't want him to choose the wrong career. The greater danger might be that he would make no choice at all.
It seems extraordinary to me now, but at that very time, the man who was to change the course of my life was in the uncharted waters of Tierra del Fuego, at the southern tip of South America. He had already spent 10 years with the Royal Navy, though he was a bare three years older than myself. His name was Robert Fitzroy. A British man of war, HMS Beagle, had lost her captain. And Fitzroy had been dispatched there to assume command. in this ship, Mr. Sullivan. The smell of decay. Where are your other officers? Sure, mostly, sir. We didn't expect you for a week or two yet. Sir? Scurvy, sir. How long have you been like this? It was a distressing time for Fitzroy. He found that the previous captain of the Beagle had committed suicide, and with the ship's crew in very low spirits, the Admiralty decided that the second in command was not a fit person to sail the vessel home. They were hardly the circumstances a young officer would choose for taking over his first command. Come in. Lieutenant Skyring. Robert Fitzroy. I'll move my belongings out as soon as I can. Please take your time, Mr. Skyring. If I were in your position, I should not be enjoying the arrival of a new ship's captain totally unknown to me in these particular circumstances. It seems we must both make the best of it. Would you like to tell me how it happened? Captain Stokes? We were due to head south again, through Tierra del Fuego to Cape Horn. Conditions were bad. I've never experienced anything like it. We had scurvy, terrible cases of frostbite, and we couldn't get supplies. And then when we had to go through it all again, he just locked himself in here in the cabin. And then? He shot himself. What is it drives a man to suicide? <laughs> 